last night in Iowa City, 90-83. to Eli Brooks led Michigan with 25. Red Wings losing in overtime at home to the Pittsburgh Penguins. And Sidney Crosby, the game winner, final score 2-1. to Wings hosting Florida tonight, 7 p.m. right here at 97. Won the ticket. Pistons on the road at Atlanta. That'll be at 7.30 and a.m. 9.50 WWJ. Tigers make a deal with the Red Sox, getting minor league catcher John Nunez, who had 280 with five homers in double-A last year. That in exchange for left-hander Matt Hall, who made six team relief appearances for the Tigers last year. Two-time ACC Player of the Year, Travis Etienne, coming back to Clemson for his senior year. And Baylor hires LSU defensive coordinator Dave Aranda as their new head football coach. At the Ticket Update desk, I'm Jeff Lesson for more 97.1 The Ticket or Radio.com. Good morning. Welcome to the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show brought to you by Capital Mortgage Funny. I'm your host, Harvey Freed. Alongside me, Harry Glanz. Good morning, Harvey. We have a wonderful morning out there. Finally, it's January 18th and winter hits Michigan. Now, I could deal with this every year. I know you, all you outdoors people, snowmobilers, everything like that. Oh, they're digging you know, it. You, you want this in, uh, oh, August, September, October, but January 18th, it's crazy outside. Everybody be safe driving in. If you don't have to go anywhere, you know, you're going to hear this all day. Don't go anywhere, but... We made it in, and look who's with us. Hey, we got everyone with us. We got Lisa Lawson, of course, from our office. Great originator. Lisa, you're awesome. The best. The Google of the office. Yeah, the Google of the (laughs) office. She's Google. She brings in Matt Bush, Remax first, from all around Southeast Michigan. Matt, you're awesome. Great to see you. Absolutely. It's awesome. Thanks for having me back on. So Matt's really good on the radio. We've had him on before. He came to the office. We did a couple promos. Yeah. Lisa Lawson, you've been doing business with Matt Bush for a long time. Mm -hmm. And there are reasons that you guys have a partnership, and the reasons are... Actually, I think Matt would probably explain that better. Yeah, so yeah. I was, Matt will tell I was you the in, story how we met. I was yeah. actually entitled for before I got into real estate, and I did some work with Lisa, and I just found her to be a true agent, someone that I really liked working with, um, and I actually had her do my mortgage on my home. So when I talk to people, I don't often refer business, but I say, hey, this is who I use for my mortgage. I think that's a better vote of confidence or referral than anybody. Right. Um, and, you know, Lisa and I have just remained friends and we have a great book of business together. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, a tennis match between Lisa <laughs> and I. We send each other business. Yeah. And then I know that um, when I send somebody to Lisa, everything's going to be taken care of. I know that it, it's the pro- there's not going to be any issues anywhere in the process. So well, a little pat on the back. And I same mean, for Matt. Yeah. yeah I've had look- people who have been looking for homes for a very long period of time and then gave up for a while and Decided to start the look again, and I said, I got the guy for you. Call Matt, and we have a, a client, Lynn, who, I mean, she'll rave and rave about what Matt's done for her yeah. and found the perfect house, and it's It's almost great. all the agents we have come on here, of course. They have, right. uh, you know, they're just a pleasure to work with. Mm-hmm. And the knowledge that they bring to the table, that's what I'm talking about. Matt, what I'm excited about when I, whenever I talk about um, business with you. We're always talking about Detroit. Yeah. And I know you're down there a lot. I was, I was down there yesterday. I was looking at all the homes that are for sale. I mean, we're a Metro Detroit. Detroit's our, our major city. Mm-hmm. It's fun. The city's coming back. You're doing a lot of business there. Yeah, there's a lot to know about all these different uh, subdivisions, all the different areas. We were we were uh, yelling them all out at the office the other yeah. day. And there are these unbelievable pockets, but there's still some things to buy or beware. And of course, we see so many of our friends going out there and buying these homes or rehabbing them. A lot of the house flippers. I saw one last night. I said, I got to have it. I got to have it. The street looked a little questionable. You got to really have education behind yourself if you're going to make that move to the city. Yeah. I mean, you got to know that if you're going to flip in a up and coming neighborhood, you might be the first one on the block. So you want to do it the right way. Um, a lot of people that I work with are buying multiple houses on the same block to kind of insulate themselves. Also, if you... You're sinking a bunch of cash into these houses. We're not going to get a mortgage on these houses. So when you buy two or three of them, then you have sales comps as well. So you can establish a neighborhood. So you know if you it. throw eighty grand into a house and a couple blocks away they're selling for a hundred, you know you have to find a way to get that capital out. You can't have all that sunken capital into one house. So um, especially if you can buy you know one, two, three houses and really you know, set the neighborhood and, and well, you work with quite a few investors too with this, don't you? Yeah. They're coming into Detroit by by the truckload. I've got guys, he was in here from Dallas. He might still be waking up here in Detroit. He's got shipping containers of appliances and granite countertops and, and cabinets ready to go and roll. 
but we're just trying to find the area where we can, you know, work with the city or, or put something together yeah. to where we can do it. Cause doing one house on one block and then leaving it makes no sense. So man, I like talking about all the neighborhoods and, and really there are people in the business that say they're in the business, but then there are people that are in the business. They drive the neighborhoods, <laughs> right. they know the neighborhood. So I threw a couple of test balloons at you when you were in the office the other day. And I said, so, so uh, where are you working? He says, oh, I'm working on, you know, Fitzgerald district over by on uh, Kentucky. I said, Oh, Kentucky. I said, uh, you know, what about Greenlawn over there? And you said, well, is it south of McNichols? I said, of course it's south of McNichols. See, now people talk about McNichols. It's McNichols, okay? It's not right. six mile over in that area. Right. It's McNichols. So, and I said, oh, yeah, you know, is it by, uh, you know, Fitzgerald District? Well, I went to Fitzgerald Elementary School. Mm-hmm. He goes, you did? I said, yeah. I said, you know, I used to know all the streets right. in order. You know, Green Lawn, Rose Lawn, Cherry Lawn, Orange <laughs> Lawn, you know, and you get into the states, yeah. you go Kentucky, Ohio, you know. You missed Indiana Wisconsin, in there, I Indiana. think. <laughs> I'm, I, used to know, I used to know them all in order. Yeah. Okay, so when you talk about that, you know the neighborhood, and, you know, you talk about the University District, you talk, right. you know, people talk about Boston Edison. Everybody knows Boston Edison, Palmer Woods, and Indian Village, okay? Everybody. But does everybody know? You can go to the east side. I mean, go. let's go to the east side. You want to go to Seven and Kelly? I mean, where do you want to go? East English so Village? We're, yeah, East English so what I'm telling you is, is that when you are looking for a specific area and they, people say, oh, yeah, I sell houses over there, you kind of got to throw up some buzzwords, a test balloon to see if somebody really knows the area. And you and I had a great time going back and forth. And not coincidentally, because I drive these neighborhoods all the time, I was just there last week. Okay, I was just there by Mary Grove. And oh, I was yeah. driving up and down the streets, taking a look at the houses. Because if you're not, if you don't know what's going on in certain neighborhoods, how can you properly advise people? So, you know, you don't just walk, you know, you don't just talk the talk. He walks you walk the, the walk. And more importantly, you drive the neighborhoods. <laughs> well, and I go right? into those buildings that you know, someone right. stopped, physically stopped me and my client yesterday. Well, I had a Listen. nail gun in my hand. He's like, you're not going in there, Listen. are you? I'm like, why not? Let's go see what's inside. You know, I tell people all the time, you know, it's not five mile, it's Finkel. Yeah. Okay. It's not five mile. So it's Matt, Finkel. Matt, there's okay. definitely some things to buyer beware. Again, Absolutely. you have an eye for you're working yeah. with investors and stuff. But when you're working with a, even a new buyer, they're talking about these opportunities and whether it be in an up and coming city, like maybe uh, Hazel Park might catch on in mm-hmm. Oakland County, maybe the last city that hasn't been touched. Mm-hmm. These are opportunities where families can go and even first time home buyers buy a house. You know, take advantage of home ownership, make it their home. Maybe they keep it as a rental, build equity. They can maybe sell it in the future and make some money because there's some there's some wiggle room there, especially if you fix up a house. Yeah, so there's a couple great areas in Detroit right now. Um, number one, I think, with a bullet, um, is Jefferson Chalmers. Mm-hmm. It's the area r- just south of Gross Point. So you have right. Gross Point schools, depending on how clever you are with your address, and the amenities um, and you can buy a house for thirty to forty thousand. Put another ten into it, and it's probably going to be worth ninety to one hundred. Yeah, that's so, a great little pocket right yeah, there. Ju- um, one thing you do need to be uh, careful of: it's one of the very few areas that makes you ca- cover flood insurance, correct? Because oh, okay. it's so close to the water, but it's still eighty to one hundred bucks a month. So it's not a huge deterrent. But you're, you're dealing with uh, soft soil over there. Um, you might do something with the the basement. None of them are going to have hot water tanks or furnaces that we, as well as we know. But uh, there's a lot of equity in the Jefferson Chalmers area. Um, and again, you're 10 minutes from downtown. So maybe if you're living downtown now in a condo and you want to, maybe your family's gotten bigger, you have a, a new person in your life or a kid, it's an area where you can still be you know, 10 minutes away from everything you've grown accustomed to. And yep. have a yard. I like that. Um, I, I'm really high on the Springwell Village area. Okay. Um, kind of in between Mexican Town yeah. and Cork Town and Del Rey, um, just adjacent to where they're building the new bridge. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of nightlife with Mexican Town and Cork Town, and both of those uh, neighborhoods are just incredibly expensive. So this is the new Hazel Park, as you would put it, for yeah. the west side, where you can buy a house for 80 to 150 and your neighborhood is selling for 230 to you know to 300,000. So a great place to find a house with instant equity, you know, cosmetic touches at the most but they're also older houses that you're going to have to, you know, put some work into. That's great stuff. If you're just tuning in, it's the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show. This is Matt Bush from Remax First. You hear that passion? I'm sitting back here going, this is who I want to take me. And right. again, the agents we always have on the show, this is what they bring. Mm-hmm. If you're working with somebody, and I'm sorry to say, if, if you're one of those people, you're always tired in the morning, that's not, you know, they're not going to find out what's going on in those neighbors. They're not going to get that pocket listing. They're not driving the streets. They don't have the right. energy. You need to have professional people to make your home sell. Oh, very successful. So I'm going to bound on that. Matt, why did you get in the business? So he'll um, explain. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, when I got uh, 
when I was referred to realtor, um, I felt like I got more of, I was treated more like a, a check than a client. Um, phone calls went unanswered, texts were responded with, you know, Hey, don't worry, I'll handle it. And just answers were never gotten to. So, um, I tend to keep a lower client load. You typically only three to four at a time. So when my clients have those questions, I can make sure that I'm finding the answers and then the reason why behind the answers. And that's the whole reason he got in the business. Yeah. I remember you telling me that. His experience yeah. wasn't the best. And he's like, we can do better. I can do better. Right. And he knew that and this he does was something better. he He's likes. amazing. Yes. He's really amazing. Reading and understanding your contract, it really, sort of, what you're talking about, sort of segues into everything that I wrote down. Um, understanding negotiations, it's so key. Uh, truly, what happens on a purchase? When are the times to negotiate? Up front, then you've got your contract right. signed. Um, after the inspection, you got an opportunity there to do some negotiations. Again, still, I get the phone calls. I'm hearing them on the streets. People are calling us at Capital all week long, telling mm-hmm. us a little bit of their bad stories because they're not dealing with the professionals, just like you, Matt Bush. Hey, that break says we got to go real quick here, but when we come back, keep your hands on the wheel, that's for sure. It's 911-248-539-9797. We'll be right back. show. We definitely want to hear from you. We want to make home ownership successful for you and your family. We want you to be educated. Yes. When I say things, I really mean them after 29 years in the mortgage industry. Uh, I mentioned to you guys earlier, I felt like the last 10 people I've spoke to, I didn't even do their mortgage, but they're calling me now for refinances. I don't think any of them read their purchase agreement. Really suggesting, really, really suggesting out there that you get a professional team behind you, that you understand that purchase agreements are signed contract. And Brian, as we're talking about this purchase agreement signed contract, I used to tease with lay agents and say, look, yeah, whippy doodle, you guys, you filled in seven blanks. But the most important one is the additional comments or the addendum to the purchase agreement where you can put all the great language in there to protect yourself, whether you're a buyer or a seller. Right. Yeah. Contingencies, uh, closing costs, whatever you want to put in there. But I mean, a good agent is going to sit you down before anything and go over all the paperwork with you and say, listen, this is A, this is B, this is C, this is what you're going to sign. So when it comes to that time, they find the dream home that they love. There's no questions about the purchase agreement. It's what was put in front of them. They sign it. And any additional comments, like you said, addendums, whatnot, you know, you just kind of explain it and go with it. Having the knowledge in your community too, you mentioned a whole bunch of things, assessments, let's throw assessments on there. A lot of road assessments we're seeing here sure. across the year. You have to really break that down. I've got a, uh, one client now where I know she's going to inherit an assessment for a sewer. Yep. So that's going to cost her. It's attached to the tax bill or whatever, but you have to know that in your knowledge of the community is key. Yeah, absolutely. You have to check on all that. You know, that's what our job is and that's what we do. We're, you know, we have a fiduciary duty, duty to the buyer and, and that's, you yeah. know, part of the plan. And it comes with teaming with a good title company, too, because, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, the mortgage lenders. Yeah. But there's also all that backlog paperwork that the title company does that most people don't really acknowledge. But, you know, yeah. if you team with a good title person and, um, you know, they're staying in contact with you, then you you get all that right up front. And you know mm-hmm. what's going to happen. Yes. Yeah, so- setting those proper expectations yep. up front. And. You know, sometimes like when you're dealing with us, you know, on the seller side, sometimes the title companies, depending on who you're dealing with, they will wait to the last minute to get those payoffs. And like what Brian was saying, when you partner with the right people, they're going to get that information out immediately. So that way you're not hunting down. If you're trying to buy a condo, you're not trying to get the condo association letters at the last minute. That's going to hold up. You know, you're ready to close on the buy side. And if the title company's not doing their their jobs on the seller side, you're waiting on these last minute items. And it's just a disservice when you getting everyone to the finish line and then it's just a last minute hiccup that could have been avoided. Yeah. Contingencies get really yeah. sticky out there and the language has to be spelled out right. to everyone. We used to see when the market was a little bad back in oh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, the homes weren't appraising. So we had a lot of.
All right, welcome back to the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show, 915. If you're just joining us, yeah, the roads are nasty. No doubt about that, as you know. Yeah, be careful driving out there. It's a little bit crazy out there. And, and you know what it is if you're listening? It's never you. It's always the person <laughs> that's in front of you or coming at you. It's never you. Be careful. Just keep your head on a swivel and see what's happening. Yeah, I don't have one of those uh, great cars in the snow, Harry, but... Uh, How do you still have a real, real, real I have no drive? idea. That's like back in the I 60s, man. I don't know. My, My next Mustang car was, be a... it was awful, driving Good. in the snow back oh in the day. Oh, my God. Yeah. But I thought your helicopter would just drop you off and pick you back <laughs> up. I'm a Detroit guy. You know, my next car will be a Dodge Charger or something cool like that. Why not? Well, I have there to give go. props. My car was a champ. I mean, I love it. It was a total champ, so... All right. Well, if you're not from Michigan... Michigan. Um, well, anyways, we're taking it on the on the chin pretty good this morning here. It's Seven about time. Point. It's January 18th. Yeah. Where do we live? I was getting worried. Hey, the snow, uh, the the Alpine Valleys, your br- Mount Brighton, Holly. Your pine, yeah, Holly, you know them all, Pine Knob. Sure, gonna, Pine Knob. Enjoy the day out there. We've got Matt Bush in with us, and if you want to join our mortgage real estate show here, definitely give us a call, 248 248- 539-9797. We are sponsored by Capital Mortgage Funding and always powered by Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation, NMLS 2289, Equal Housing Lender. Now we got that out of the way. Thank Definitely you. Definitely give us a phone call. Yeah, we always doing our work here. I can't say we have everyone in the office today, Harry, but I know we have some souls in there. we have some people in the office We have today. some people there. If you need that approval letter, if you're still out there, I saw a couple on Facebook already. It's a showing day, Matt. This is yeah, a absolutely. day that... Families have been excited for it, and yeah. I wrote it down last night. They came out with the information that I couldn't believe it. January is getting to be a very popular month to show houses. They said they yeah. went back and did the uh, the analysis on it. January was the second most uh, showed houses. They had many people hitting them up. That was from Realtor.com. Matt, we've been busy since this year started. Yeah, I haven't stopped since November. Um, I'm not one of those and associates. So when you call me, you get me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're not going to get pushed off to somebody. Uh, you're not. I'm not a part of a team. I'm just. I'm the shower. Uh, I'm the one that's going to negotiate for you. I'm going to answer your phone. You know, six a.m. to whenever p.m. So um, I haven't stopped since, like I said, October. January is amazing because everybody got all these gift letters from their from their uh, or gifts rather financial from aunts, uncles, cousins, you know, parents. So now they have all of this money in their pocket and it's beginning to burn a hole. Wait a minute. I got to hit up my relatives. There we go. <laughs> if their relatives giving people money. Yeah. I better make some calls. Well, and even if family. you're a little yeah. short in a second here, you're getting tax refunds. Absolutely. So you've got two and two together. So yeah. you, you, you know, you get two grand maybe from your, uh, your, your, your mom or your dad over Christmas. And then you, you start thinking, what can I do with this money? So, you, you know, you contact the realtor, you look at a couple of houses, you start the process and then by the time you're ready to pull the trigger, uh, you've gotten your tax refund. So you've yes. got 5500 yeah. bucks in your pocket. That's more than enough in a lot of circumstances on a first-time home buy um, to put down. You know, Maybe we'll negotiate some concessions to reduce your cost to close. Or you could qualify and, for down payment assistance, possibly. Yeah, There's a lot of ways to get it done. February traditionally has the least amount of houses on the market, too. That's why you see so many people looking in January is there's a dip in inventory because people think have the the false idea that they're only going to sell their houses in March through September. Yeah, right. So, man, so there's that kind you, of desert. The volume in our office right now, and we're a pretty good indicator when purchase agreements come in, we're seeing it year over year. Last January to this January, we're up significantly because last year it just started with the weather and the weather came early it came crazy and, and it what, lasted and, and what happened yeah, is that it lasted throughout through march mm-hmm. and january february last year would, would start off slow the year started off slow this year there's no end in sight even even as the holidays fell on a wednesday and there was a two-week lull we hit january january 6th and everything started to roll so the last two weeks have been incredibly busy which is a good thing people have been out they've been looking at houses they've been buying houses and then and the february closings are going to be really strong too mm-hmm. so we're seeing this year versus last year already a significant pickup so we're very pleased about that and the buyers are out there yeah. in mass looking at houses now what do we say there are buyers looking at quality inventory if it's a quality house you're going to get action on the house so you have to be busy. I know that because we're busy and we're, it's just a residual effect. Yeah. I, I was out collecting earnest money deposits on New Year's Eve. Right. So, I mean, it just, it doesn't stop. And I mean, I, nobody wants it to stop by any means. Um, I'm just waiting for it. Just the full on 
you know, summer selling season to just rip everybody's hair out. Right. Definitely a great start to the quarter. We're going to have a lot of action here. Yeah. You got January, February, all the way through April. It's not as lopsided as it used to be. Right. More and more people online, at least viewing them that way and then getting in touch with some great real estate agents and then making their dreams come true. The inventory is tight. Are you seeing the inventory for the good houses still looking pretty tight? Yeah. So January, February and the early parts of March are, are going to be the lowest points of the year for inventory year over year. Um, but then as, you know, St. Patrick's Day hits and the sun begins to break, you're going to just see, you know, inventory explode um, with this election year. I, I don't know if we've talked about that too much, but it, we're going to have a very voluminous market, whether that voluminous, d- voluminous. I, I like that. that one up. I'm, I'm going to, I'm so going there's going to be a lot of supply and I'm not yeah. sure it's, it's going to drive down the cost though. I think a lot of people are going to be looking to sell inventory because of the insurity of what's going to happen towards the end of the year. So they're going to want to have that money in their pocket. So a lot of investors who have the the nicer area rental houses, those you're going to see a lot of those go for sale this mm-hmm. this uh, this uh, summertime. All right, a little bit of mortgage talk real quick in there. Of course, mortgage rates off their recent lows, still looking to stay low uh, throughout this, again, election year. Um, the past two days were a little strong economic news, corporate earnings, uh, move money into the stock yeah. market. People are making money in the stock market, but that money comes out of the bond market. Market. It trickles interest rates up a little bit. Correct. Of course, we always talk about big geopolitical events across the globe that can affect interest rates. Hey, here's the deal. Rates are great. A lot of your families in the last two years did get a little bit higher mm-hmm. rate. Maybe they had lower credit scores. We know last year this time, as Harry mentioned, November, the rates had trickled up, November, yeah. December, January. Now there's an opportunity with rates really looking fantastic to take care of that refinance. Again, a lot of my clients, I'm seeing that they have maybe another 5 or 10% equity in the house. If they bought it right, their credit scores are higher, and they can right. save money, Lise. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I can't even tell you how many refis I've been doing this month especially. And people have equity. You bought four or five years ago. They have a lot of equity. We're doing, um, some of them are refinances just to remove private mortgage insurance or FHA mortgage insurance, dropping those payments, dropping the rate. A lot of people are taking advantage of cash out. Um, yeah. I've got quite a few people that have had gotten cash out and had a very similar payment to what they started with. There or, you, you know, we I just did one the other day, cash out, save somebody $1,200 a month. Yeah, that's Huge. great. Consolidating Paying out all debt. of their debt, yes. Paying off all their credit cards with all their toxic debt. They've got a... Yeah. $1,200 a month savings, which is huge. Cash flow and, increase. Yeah. And they're trying to retire, so they're thrilled. And the thing is, though, people are, you know, generally speaking, I'm going to give generalities right. here. Rates around 4%. Okay. You want to borrow at 4% in your tax bracket, even if you're at the lowest tax bracket, not the highest, the lowest, you're going to be borrowing around net, net, net after Uncle Sam gives you the only tax break that you have <laughs> at $750,000 under in mortgage interest. You're going to be at 3%, right? Mm-hmm. So what are you waiting for? I mean, I say it all the time. Why are you waiting? Rates are not going down to zero. No. What are you going to kill yourself over an eighth? I mean, stop right. that. Right. Do what's Take advantage best of for it you now when you can. Right. Take advantage because you. we don't know where the market's going. We. You have to live in the present. You can't live what's going to happen to rates in the future. Who knows what happens to rates right. in the future? What are you worried about in the future for? Take care of business now. Save that money now. Yeah. And, and we're doing a lot of that. And also, Matt, I want to bring the purchase business back into it for a second. You know, you say that inventory is down, and it is traditionally January and February. But if somebody finds a house that they really like, what are you waiting for? Absolutely I mean, if they nothing. they really like it, rates are down. You found the house that you like. It's in the neighborhood that you want to be in. It's in the school district you mm-hmm. want to be in. You know, you can't I'm, – I'm not saying do anything unprepared or without doing your homework – but if you've been out there and you're in the market and you finally find something that you like, just because it's January doesn't mean something better is going to come up. Yeah. What, don't worry about it. Can, can you imagine someone who closed on their loan yesterday and the U-Haul truck pulls up like this? You know, I always <laughs> right. tell people who are thinking about selling, list your house in January. Mm-hmm. A, you have the most serious buyers. If they're willing to move in always. this, they're, really they're, wanting they're, to they're move. actually serious. Yeah. So maybe put some booties on. Maybe make sure you, yeah. you know, that they're removing their shoes so they're not getting anything on your carpet. But now's the time. Let's get it going. Um, that way, you know... People Plus, are there's less to pick from. You wait till April, you're going to be one of how many more? Because there's going to be that many more out there listing. And then the small thing that your house needs to have done, maybe it needs to be painted, maybe it needs a new bathroom. Well, now there are, like Lisa said, 10 houses with a better bathroom. So you're not In the, the, spring, the, the yeah, one small now. thing that you have, right. go, you know, the negative on your house, it's going to show 10 times worse when there's 30 more houses on your block for sale. So Matt, put it this way, logic and reasoning 101, right? If somebody has a house listed for sale in January, they're serious about selling. Mm-hmm. If somebody's walking through, especially in this weather now, a house in January, they're serious about buying. 
Absolutely. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. That's that's Absolutely. just logic and reasoning 101. That makes hey, sense, everybody? If you're selling your house, look, you want you buy one of those for five dollars or something. I don't even not even at those five and belows. You can put a little mat at your door, have the people oh, yeah. take their shoes off. Again, it's not the end of the world. We can tough it out. We're pretty mm-hmm. tough. Again, maybe not right now, but in a couple hours. So right. maybe postpone your day a little bit. Give some time to shovel the sidewalks. And have stuff. another cup of coffee. There you go. Yeah, have one <laughs> extra cup. Hey, you're listening to the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show again, brought to you by Capital Mortgage Fund. And you can reach us all weekend long. All week long, and including on Monday, which is Martin Luther King Day, we are open. Some of our staff won't be there, but we're going to be there to take your pre-approvals because yeah. we know so many families out there need to sit down and take a look at their debts, take a look at what they can do to benefit their situation. Yeah, and you, and have if you the got day the day off. off work. Yeah, come on go. in. We can help you out. Yeah, we're going to have a full staff on Monday, so absolutely. that's a key thing. Yeah, I mean, some people don't know where to start. They feel like, oh, I had a bankruptcy seven years ago. I can't do anything. Or I had a bankruptcy three years ago. I can't. There's always a game plan. And even if we can't do something for you right now, we can put you on the path, whether we go through kind of like a credit clinic. So it'll be like, hey, it might not be right now, but in four months, you'll be ready. Get started now. You, you got to start somewhere unless you want to be a runner forever, live in your parents' basement, whatever your situation is. You know. And, and to that point, it was uh, January five years ago where I f- first sat down with Lisa in your office mm-hmm. and she said, hey, Matt, you know, you, you've got a good income. You've got a solid savings account, but we're not quite there yet. We need to do you need to we don't work out a couple of things here. Here's a couple of plans to do it. And by April, I was ready to go True and story. then per, pulled the trigger uh, May and I moved in in, in, uh, in July. So mm-hmm. now if you're not you know, thinking about buying a house, it's time to call the bank, put yourself in position. So when it is the right time, you can pull You're that ready trigger. To go, yep. That's a great point, man. You got to get your funds together, get that credit score up. Hey, we're up against a quick break here. 926. Keep your hands on the wheel. We'll be back. 248-539-9797. When 9-11, 2001 hit. Okay, oh yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. On the air that week. Okay. And we, we started in 99, that. didn't we? We no, started no, the show. No, what oh. I'm saying is we were on the air during yes. then. So, <laughs> you know, we had a show during then. That's how I know how long we've been on the air. Mm. You're matching that up. I'm matching it up. I'm hey. just trying. I'm just trying to keep it in chronological. Way to bring the room down for, twi- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for, tw- hey, for 2020. Brain. Though we <laughs> always get the calls. Hey, when are you guys going to be off the air so we can talk sports? Look, you guys can call anytime and talk sports too. I'll answer sports questions. I've got no real problem. estate, mortgages, yeah. sports. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. We'll make it fun for you. At ten o'clock, you got Pat Caputo coming up with sports all day. San Fran, Minnesota on the NFC side. Titans, Ravens. On the other, so a lot of exciting football mm-hmm. coming up. So really cool, and they got Pistons basketball later tonight. So for all you sports people, keep it here on ninety seven one the ticket. You guys want to welcome your office in because it's really nice. River Oaks Realty, of course. You guys have two locations. We brought in this morning, of course, Amanda Carducci, who's the broker over there, and then Brian Della Pella. And you guys are real busy. And like you said, Brian, we talked earlier in the show. Home started eighty, a hundred thousand people are getting in, but then also a lot of really quality stuff. More expensive. The next step up from there on Grozy. You see a lot of new construction down there. Tell me some of the hot areas that you guys see where there's maybe that next great spot to buy it. You know, um, downriver, you have the new construction. You get in Flat Rock. You get out in the Huron area. You get that going. Um, but the tried and true is, you know, our, our Trenton market's really great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Southgate's Brownstown. still very strong. Brownstown, Woodhaven. Um, you know, those those markets are, are pretty much... You know, locked and you, down. They're and great. you got your, we were talking about millennials earlier, your downtown mm-hmm. Wyandotte, which if you're from I'd Down River, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, like it's, growing. man, mm-hmm. it's so hot down there right now. When so. I was cruising to Grozeal last month, uh, yeah, I took the toll, I had to take the toll bridge and everything, but that's one of the things that stepped up is what really shocked me was I was in Biddle in that area and Wyandotte's really, anything up along the river there, a lot of new restaurants, we saw some new condominium projects yeah. going in, but there's also some older homes that have that great charm okay. and boy, I, I was just, whenever I see something, I always picture myself because I lived there, yeah. and I said, yeah, definitely. It was a pretty cool area. Why not super cute? You know, and that, I think that's a great feature because it's like, so they're in Grozy, other in Southgate, but, you know, Trenton and Wyandotte especially, you have those walkable downtown areas where you can literally just walk out of your front door and you're going to, you can either bar hop, you can go to all the local, the shops. And the cool thing about the shops down is that, you know, it's your, that's,
Brought to you by Big Corporation. Michigan, a loser in college basketball last night at Iowa. Luke Garza, 33 points. Iowa beats Michigan, 90 to 83. Meanwhile, Michigan State defeats Wisconsin, 67 55. Cassius Winston sets a Big Ten career record for assists. Michigan State saves in sole possession of first place in the Big Ten. The Red Wings losing in overtime at home to Pittsburgh, 2 to 1. Sid Crosby, the game winner. Wings in Florida tonight from the LCA, 7 p.m. right here on the ticket. Pistons at Atlanta tonight. That's 7 30 here. That one at AM 950 WWJ. Tigers acquire minor league catcher John Nunez from Boston in exchange for left hander Matt Hall. Two time ACC player of the year, Travis Etienne, staying at Clemson for his senior year. Baylor hires LSU DC. That's defensive coordinator Dave Aranda as its new head football coach. And on the PGA Tour, it's Ricky Fowler and Scotty Scheffler tied at the midway lead at the Amex. At the Ticket Update Desk, I'm Jeff Lesson for more. 97 won the ticket or radio.com. All right, welcome back. 931. It's the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show brought to you by Capital Mortgage Fund. And you can reach us all weekend long, all week long. 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker. Save money on closing costs, get a great interest rate. But the key, get the knowledge you need. Don't be one of those people that don't know what they're signing, didn't review the information. It's a surprise party at the closing. Definitely get the knowledge. You'll be a, such a better, happier buyer. Your real estate agent will like it too because having Matt, that qualified agent, uh, working with qualified uh, buyers and having that knowledge, you guys are going to put a great offer together. And that's how I always discuss. Read that agreement and put the agreement together, the one that you want. The, the key uh, for my profession and my idea is to do it at the, at the buyer's pace or at the seller's pace. Don't push. My job is to advocate and advise. You know, I'll open the door. We'll, we'll go see as many houses or as few houses you want to do. But when you feel comfortable and confident and you like the house, then I send you over to Lisa. Talk about closing costs. Talk about what it's going to cost you a month. Make sure the numbers are right. And let's write an offer based on your numbers. I love that. Hey, let's move off to some calls here this morning. If you want to join the show, 248-539-9797. First, we'll go off to Red on a cell phone. Hey, Red, good morning. You've got a question about qualifying for a mortgage. Tell us what your question is. Hey, I was um, asking about, um, you know, financial institutions. Um, do you have to have use your credit score? Can you get um, a, a, a a home loan based on your assets and income? Not, you're saying forget about your credit. It's just based on your income. Yeah, you know, just going on like like certain bills, like your your DT bill and, and you know things things of that nature. You don't you ain't worried about. Your credit score. Well, let me you ask you this: about your assets the income. Yeah, well, you're you're worried about the credit score, but we might not be. What is your credit score? I mean, some people think that they've got bad credit; they really don't. Some people, their credit scores are higher than they really are. What's you? What do you think that your credit score is? Or, or do, do you, you know? not have a credit score? If you don't See, have credit, uh, you can get a loan. If you without a score, what do you got, Red? Um, it's it's like. Seven fifty ish. Oh, yeah. come on, Red. Worried about that's Red, good. you're paying. Yeah, you're paying that's your bills on time. Yeah. Red, we uh, generally speaking, FHA loans five eighty credit scores and above. But we have a program at Capital Mortgage Funding that we can help move your credit scores up. Mm -hmm. That's the key. But yeah, Red, anyone out there listening, I thank you for the call. Anyone out there? Yeah, yeah, credit's a big part of this. And there's a lot of reasons why. Not only the mortgage interest rate, but the PMI, the mortgage insurance that's Correct. involved. is re related about, to down payment and credit score. And as you know, Lise, the down payment assistance program, Michigan, mm -hmm. through the state of Michigan, has a minimum credit score of 640. So yeah, credit plays a role in that and including your homeowner's insurance, your mm -hmm. car insurance. There's no doubt anyone listening out there, if you got some credit issues, give us a call. Sometimes we can work them out and give you some pointers. It's just getting the knowledge behind you. Again, sometimes you can negotiate these. Uh, if you had some things, situations in the past, but we can typically find a way for you. And if we can't, we'll put a plan together. And that's the key. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, credit is complicated and there's so much misinformation out there about credit and how it works. And there's a lot of tools out there and we're happy to help everybody get them to the point that they can be mortgageable. There you go. And definitely follow up on uh, Red's call. Hey, Becky, we got Becky Alley calling in. Hi, Beck. Becky Alley from the Down hey. River area. Hey, hey. what's up, Becky? Hey, I miss you guys. And we miss you too, but you know what? I'm glad that you're safe and sound. It's crazy drive in. If you were it to come was. in, it was crazy. Lisa will tell you. Yeah, North Macomb to here took me about an hour and 40 minutes. <laughs> well, listen, I'm here to call in and say, like, hustle never sleeps. I mean, you guys are in the station right now, keeping all of our listeners 
informed. I actually have an appointment um, with a very important client of mine in Trenton at 10. So you got people out there. The snow is going to not going to stop them when they're out there looking at their homes. And you guys are just a true testament that it doesn't matter what the weather is. We're going to be out there. We're going to be there for our clients. And I'm actually kind of pumped up about this snow because I'm a snowboarder. Right <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back. I'll be let, let's see like Mount Holly tomorrow. And hey, talk back. about hustle. I mean, look at Matt Bush driving his tush in here, obviously, you know, first thing in the morning on a Saturday through all this, too. Hey, Beck, yeah. let everybody know what's going on in the area that you serve most and uh, tell everybody about the volume that's going on. And this year versus last year, what do you see happening? Well, um, honestly, it's it's actually a lot. There, It's busier. So last year, there was a little bit slower in the beginning of the early winter months, but you're seeing that. Um, Clients right now, they're excited. There really wasn't really a lag time outside of the holidays. I mean, it was almost like a slingshot right after Christmas and New Year's. It was mm-hmm. just like, bam, I'm ready to look at houses. And the important thing for our clients that are out there selling homes right now, looking to buy, the people that are out there are serious. I mean, there's literally people in Snowmageddon right now driving to showings because they need to find their future home, and it's very important for them. So. Especially like I'm in Oakland, I'm in Wayne County, and right now the market is hot even though it's freaking cold outside. (laughs) Hey, Beck, everyone's looking for an angle. Why not get out there? And if you get up earlier in the morning, again, if you get out there and you're willing to risk this a little bit, again, you've already put a plan together with your agent. You've probably already looked at a lot of houses, but all of a sudden this week on Thursday or Friday, a new listing popped up. Yeah, get out there. Make that offer. See if that house fit your needs. Here's the deal. Hot listings, homes that are rehabbed on the inside or really well taken care of do not last. I had... I'm not exaggerating. Three different clients yesterday asked me to work up cost estimates for the same house. They right. don't. And when I went to do it for the third client, I got a text saying or offer was accepted. And I was like, I'm still sending it, obviously. But yeah. I mean, start to finish 32 hours on the market, multiple yeah, offers. Nice. You have the to get is, up and get out there and do it. If you think that's the one good. for you, you can't wait. Be like, oh, it's Wednesday. I'll see. If, you know, maybe we can go see it on Saturday. Well, you, it's probably not going to be there, you know. Yeah, you just got to show up. Yep. You know, sometimes if you're on a day like this or a rainy day and you don't feel like going to work, you don't feel like, oh, maybe this is the house for me, you could be walking into your potential dream home mm-hmm. or, you know, like that. Whatever, you just never know. So sometimes you got to be careful. Obviously, like Harry said earlier, I think he said, it's never you, it's everybody else. And I definitely am a firm believer of that on the road. Yeah. Um, but sometimes you just got to show up, be safe and, you know, just go out there and we're here to help you in any way we can. Yep. All right, Beck, thanks for calling in. Uh, definitely, it's 9.38, and uh, Becky, you know, you got a busy day ahead of you. We're excited to see you on Monday, and we'll, we'll be talking business then. All right, you guys be safe. Thanks. All right. You too, stay so, well. Everybody, that's Becky Alley. She's one of the co-hosts of the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show, along with Lisa Lawson, John Cole, myself, and, of course, Mr. Harvey Freed. Well, we does do a great job. Day. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about years and years of experience here. And uh, listen, she's up. She's going to be out pretty soon doing whatever she can do. You know, we work with people and we bring people on the show and what you'll get from this show and our our knowledge and our advice from the people that are doing this show, it's straight talk. I mean, it's just right. straight up talk. There's no, you know, you ask questions, you get answers. You get asked questions and we don't know the answer, we'll find out the answer. But it's really, that's why we call it the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show. The answers are hardcore because we'll answer your hardcore questions. You might not like the answers, answer, but it's going to be the but truth. But it's straight. It's yeah. straight. Listen, it's Detroit. We're straight. And uh, you'll get straight up answers. So um, real quick tip, as Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday progress, um, we have a lot of snow. We'll have a lot of snow on our roofs. Yes. The houses that have snow on the roofs into next week have good roofs. The ones that have the snow fall off have have roofs that need work. Yep. You can tell that because the heat from the inside of the house has gone through the roof and melted the snow off. So the houses with the sign in front of their yards that have a lot of snow on the roof still... They have insulation. That's a good thing. Those don't need the roofs. The houses you're driving by and you see the yard in the front yard or the sign in the front yard and no snow on the roof... All of the heat's going right through the front, the roof. You better, you know, like they say for boats, bust out another couple thousand Man. because, you know, it's going to take some I, I like that, Mad. Reading and understanding your contract sort of falls into this. Really giving yourself enough time to do the proper home inspections. That's, that's what I think is extremely important. Again, yes. you have this 7 to 10 day window. Maybe it's not enough. Maybe you need 10 to 12 days. So you can do that. You can get your offer accepted. If your general inspector comes up and says, look, 
I would have someone take a look at this. You have to reach out to your agent. Then they can reach out to the listing agent the, who's representing the seller and give you an additional, do an addendum, giving you an additional few days to definitely take care of some inspections. Yeah, because sometimes your general inspector will find things like you need to sewer scope or we need to have a foundation inspection. And then you're calling another expert and obviously they have, you know. They're busy. Yeah, exactly. They might not be able to get out there the very next day, you know, and. So make sure that you're doing your due diligence. Most people understand that if something was found and you want to check it out, they're going to give you additional time. And that's another thing in a realtor bag of tricks. I have two real uh, two home inspection companies that I use that I, I probably do 90% of my business with, and I almost keep them on retainer. I keep them so busy. So there you go. On Thursday, we hit like three houses with one of my guys, and we had you know three, four reports. It was 300 pages between the three of them. You know, top to bottom, roof to roof to basement. So, you know, that's another the asset as a realtor. I always say, hey, do you have? A, uh, do you want to do an inspection? Or actually, I always tell people to do an inspection. Do you want to find your own inspector, or do you want to use somebody that I can sure. send you with? Mm-hmm. And you know. Hey, Matt, there's nothing wrong with also calling a heating and cooling company. You can take care of that. You can call a roofing company. They'll come out and take a look at the roof. Insulation, you name it. You can have all these professionals come out. Some of them have $75 charges for inspection. Some are free. So take a look. Anyways, we got more advice. Lots of information right when we come back. 248-539-9797. All right, welcome back to the show, 915. It's the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show, brought to you by Capital Mortgage Funding. You can always reach us at Capital all week long, 1-800-LOW-RATE, the best mortgage banker. Also, we're powered by Fairway Independent Mortgage Corporation and NMLS, 2289. So definitely uh, equal housing chunk. lender. Equal housing right. lender here. So I was so jacked up to start the week, okay? So Monday was really the first week everybody was back. It was in, the Mondayest in, of all Mondays. In society, okay, <laughs> finally, right? Finally, society's back to work after the way the holiday fell. On a Wednesday, two holidays. So people took two weeks off. I did. And <laughs> so I'm not <laughs> working. Oh, I really didn't, but I did. This is not an indictment, all yeah. right? So what I'm saying is is that finally society got back to work. Everybody was pretty pumped up to start back on Monday. And I got to tell you something. When you roll into a new year, and I'm not a big New Year's resolution guy, but there are goals that you set for yourself, for your company, for the people that you work with, your teammates, and everything like that. And I was pretty pumped up because – You get to wipe the slate clean. So whatever Mm -hmm. happened in the past is in the past, and now you get to wipe the slate clean. You get to say to yourself, (laughs) you want to know what? I'm here today. Let's look today and move forward. People looking to buy a house, whatever happened before, that doesn't mean Listen, it's a new it's a new day. It's yeah, a new who was year. that guy in 2019? Yeah, right. I don't well, know that guy no more. Yeah, whatever, <laughs> right? I mean, relationships, whether they're personal or work relationships, whether they're financial goals, whether they're things that you have, business goals, you get to start over and make it happen. And one of the goals that people have for 2020, like Becky said before the break, was somebody's going to buy a house, right? You get to work with those people that are going to buy a house in 2020. We get to work with them, too. And it's a great feeling when you get to work with somebody that has set a goal to buy a house, or in our case, also pay off debt. That they're in a, and we put them in a position to succeed for the new year. So I was really excited, and we talked about that. We talk about that every day. Every day is a very new opportunity. Put whatever's in the past happened in the past. You can't change it. That's why it's called history, right? Can't change it. So let's move on. So it's good. That's all I have to say about that. No, I feel good about it. Thank you. Uh, I I feel my blood pressure went down. I think everyone listening did. Yeah, just (laughs) chill out. Whatever. Who cares what happened before? Stop with that. What is I we're like that, Harry. Buying houses, right? No, I like that with buying buy houses. Buy a house. It's you know, a Harry, goal, Harry. One of the things about buying houses, and Brian, Amanda, you guys might see this too with buyers. And as Becky said, you know, just take those first steps, to take that leap forward, and find out more about it. But it's really the pre-approval isn't just a piece of paper, and that's more and more what I'm finding with some of the people I'm talking to. And again, yes, I want you to come and get your mortgage through Capital Mortgage Funding, but for a lot of reasons, not just do I give you a piece of paper, but we go over and what that pre-approval really means. Uh, You guys must love working with an educated buyer. It definitely helps everyone Mm -hmm. in the process. And it helps the buyer. It helps them save money and make better decisions because they have that knowledge behind you. Give me a little bit of that warm, fuzzy feeling. Do you feel that same way, Amanda? Yeah, you know, it's definitely nice to partner with a a loan officer who has scrubbed down a buyer and educated them and, you know, done their part, really. Um, And then when when they come in our hands, we, you know, we are ready to go and, and we can educate them on our half. I don't want to get into your business, and I'm sure you don't want to get into ours. No question about you know, it. Stay, and, um, in your stay in I your don't, lane. I don't. I'm not <laughs> selling houses. Honestly, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm not showing houses. I'm not going on the multi list. I'm not checking out neighborhoods. Yeah. That's your. 
position in this in our partnership, right? Mm-hmm. It's a team, all right? I love baseball. If, I, if I'm playing shortstop and there's a fly ball to left field, I'm not running out to catch that ball. All right, I love that music. 9.45, if you're just waking up, it's the Hardcore Mortgage Real Estate Business Show. We're going to have sports for you. Keep it here on 97.1 on The Ticket. Would you believe we got some serious, serious football tomorrow, playoff football, of course, divisional finals, uh, AFC, NFC championship games, really exciting stuff Then the Super Bowl two weeks from now. Keep it here on 97.1 on The Ticket. I think we got the Red Wings a little bit later tonight also here down at Little Caesars Arena, which is awesome stuff. 248-539-9797. want to thank everyone who's listening. Again, roads are a little tough out there. Be careful. Slow it down just a little bit. Let's move off to Cheryl and Troy. Cheryl, you got a great question here. Go ahead with it. Uh-oh. Oh. Did we lose her? We did. No, Uh-oh. no, we got her. There you are. Hey, Cheryl, good morning. How are you? Good, good morning. I'm fine. How are you? Very morning. good. Thanks for calling in the show. So go ahead. We want to hear your question. Um. My husband and I are thinking of moving from the Detroit area to Lansing in the next year. We think our house will sell very quickly, but we don't know where to begin in Lansing. We don't know realtors or good areas, bad areas. Um, I don't know where to start. We need to do some homework ahead of time, but I'm not sure what to do. Well, I think, and then, Matt, I'll let you, sh- you definitely jump in here on this one, but there's no doubt that once you probably make a few calls, I'll look at some of the areas, and I think you're probably going to have to interview. There's no reason why the first agent you have to sign with, I think it would probably be an interview type process where one day you go up there and you set it up where you're going to meet two or three different agents and have them take you out to the homes, and either one of them is going to show you a house you like or you're going to feel that vibe and Matt, you're looking like you're going to say, yeah. is that pretty much it? I just don't think you sign up with the first person. Absolutely. And, you know, Remax, we are actually the largest real estate company, not only in Southwest Mich- or Southeast Michigan, but worldwide. We, we outsell how, uh, every other company two to one. So, Shelly, we'd be happy to um, speak with you off air and maybe introduce you to a few of our agents up in Lansing. Uh, have the same conversation that uh, Harvey was saying and say, hey, explain your situation to a few of these Lansing agents. Um, test out which one you feel most comfortable with, and then yeah, maybe make a day trip on a Saturday, hit a couple of offices, feel you know feel if you who you vibe with. I mean, buying a house, you're essentially just spending afternoons with people, so you want to find someone that that you click with, yeah, yeah. that you want that you don't yeah. mind spending afternoon with, and that you feel that has the uh, the knowledge of the market. And and Cheryl, I think getting a warm referral is the best way to go, and if Matt can help you out, introduce you to a couple people, and then it's up to you. But getting a referral to somebody who's experienced, by somebody who's experienced, I think it's a, always a good way to go. Correct. Yeah. Yes, that would be wonderful. Because you never want to call and get the person who started, no offense, three months ago in the business. <laughs> well, and, and yeah. she's making a big move. She's yeah, relocating to an move, entire right? different area. Yeah, so, I agree. And, and there's, you need somebody that's experienced in that area, and you want yeah, somebody that's been around the block a few times and uh, kind of walk you through it. So um, Matt will give you a call. He'll make Perfect. a warm yeah, introduction absolutely. with you, and then... Uh, you know, you'll be on your way, but uh, good luck with that move. Okay, thank you so much. Well, thanks thank for calling in, Cheryl. Have a great day, Cheryl. I truly appreciate today. that and definitely get you set up with the right real estate agents. Really key stuff. Uh, 10% of the agents do probably 90% of the business, and there's no doubt. Look, we're in this. Mm-hmm. We're in the trenches every day. There's a nice way to say it. I talk to plenty oh, unqualified. <laughs> thanks, Aaron. Right? That's why it comes in to uh, pull the go. leash back <laughs> on me, but there's no doubt that I talk to plenty of agents, but the agents tell me, Matt, yeah. you great agents out there. You 10% of the agents are calling me up saying, Harvey, I can't believe it. This agent's so blah, blah, blah. And, mm-hmm. and, and yeah, if, if you're not, if you are an agent and you're not calling people back, it's ridiculous. I, I get the same thing. Come on, step your game up. You're not gonna you're not gonna be around because I'll tell you. Hey, I gotta this, throw the other side out. You know they hate on mortgage uh-oh. people too. They <laughs> yeah, they hate do. Unmarged, okay, so I'm, it's out there. They I hate on mortgage it. people too. <laughs> All right, there you go. I gave the other side. All right. You know I had I I have a I'm pending on a deal in Sterling Heights right now, and uh, it's on a major street, and a car uh, drove through the front of the house. Oh, so man. here, here I am trying to communicate with another realtor about all the the situation going through. You know, it's a family that's buying their first house with a four year old, and she's like, you know what? We'll handle it. We'll do all this. You know, she's saying the right things, but yeah. at the same rate, hey, the deal's not going to close as fast as you wanted it. No, right? Right. And now a car literally put a hole in the front of their house, like brick everywhere, drywall windows gone. Uh, we've got a uh, clean up here on aisle right. four. Uh, right. yeah, it's going to be on a aisle 17. If and you that's an ex- perfect example is when communication is key. Everybody yeah. has to be on the same page. You have to communicate with everybody. Your closing date is going to get pushed back. We try really hard to close on time all the time, but sometimes 
stuff well, actually happens. Let me answer this question. Is the car included in the sale price? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we uh, we had a fire hydrant relocated to the front oh, yard. Boy. <laughs> right. Oh, boy. You could definitely do that. Uh, yeah, I remember in the past we had a situation where I think... I don't want to even say it. There was a murder or something at the house. Oh, and then the listing agent called us up and said, they don't want the house. Like, I, no, I, I don't. The police won't let us in to do the appraisal at this <laughs> point. So, yeah, there's some craziness out there. But again, real estate, Matt, as you know, could be a, really a lot of fun. It's exciting. Hey, you're going to be signing your name on a whole lot mm-hmm. of money. Why not enjoy everything about it? Enjoy right. the mortgage person. Have some fun with them. Have some fun with your real estate agent. Right. And again, if you don't, if you're not having fun, it's because you don't have the knowledge behind you. If you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the confidence. So no right. one's laughing. Well, if you leave the 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 stress to the experts, let your agents ah. stress about it. Let your mortgage person stress about it, you know, and, and let them take that on. We'll get you where you need to be. You know, we'll get you to the proof of approval you want. We'll get you to the house that you want. Sometimes it you know might take a minute or two. Sometimes it doesn't. But trust your experts. And people starting to shop now, you, you, you haven't started shopping for your first house until you've lost out on a house. Ah. Like, that's, a good point. that's the first thing that people are going to know, you know. You'll get in the market. You'll 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 get laissez faire initially when you start looking for houses. Then you'll you'll think about a house, and then you sometimes you'll overthink about a house. And then just as you're about to put an offer, it'll be snapped up by somebody else who who also wanted to mm-hmm. buy, buy in that house. So or or the other option is you want the house, but you want to see how low you can get it yep. for. And even though maybe your agent said, "Look, this is the comps in the area. You really should put in this offer. It will say 150." Um, you decide, nope, I'm going to see if I can get it for 140. You put in an offer for 140. It's a multiple offer situation and you don't get the bid. Somebody else gets the house. So it, It's also like one of the rites of passage. It like is. Losing out on the first house means, hey, all right, now you are officially a home buyer. Now you're officially <laughs> now in you're the aggressive. market. Yeah. Now gotcha. you know what to expect. You know all the hoops to jump through. You've already signed your name to 100 times through a purchase <laughs> agreement. So everything else is gravy from there. Sometimes what's meant to be is meant to be the medium sales price across the nation, 312500 Homes are affordable here in Michigan. And Absolutely. across the United States. 312 is the median? That's the median price from last year. I don't know. Wow. I, I wrote it down, so it's got to be true. Someone wrote it out there. I don't know. Maybe it's not. 6.9% home appreciation last year across the country. I thought it said 39 in my last article I read, but that's why home ownership's great. And the mm-hmm. other part of it, rents are going up at 3% rate. So again, at, at you get your home more. appreciations going up, but your rents are going up. So again, if you're going to stay, that's the key. Mm-hmm. If you're staying, you're not going anywhere. Your job's here, your life is here, and your family's here. Home ownership's the way to go. Absolutely. And just think, uh, my conversation with somebody who's starting the process is first off, what are you paying a month in rent? Mm-hmm. You know, and then I say, all right, you know, meet with Lisa. And that's how I started was, hey, Lisa, I'm spending, you know, X amount of money in rent and utilities a month. How much of a house can I afford? And that was the conversation I had when I want mm-hmm. or when I started uh, looking for a house. I was pre approved for much more, but I wanted to keep, you know, maintain that same lifestyle. Some people rush, hey, I'm qualified for $180,000. Let's do it. Not knowing that, that means that now their bills are going to double. You know, their gas bill is going to be bigger because they have a bigger house and you can't no longer live. You you can no longer live the life that you've grown accustomed to in your apartment, in your condo at a rental. So you you really need to shop smarter versus just rushing out and buying that biggest house. You just said something. And and that's why good agents listen. So even though, for example, Matt could have you know, possibly bought a $500,000 house, he didn't want to. He wanted to stay and maintain kind of what he was paying in rent. That's what he was used to. Listening to your buyers is what makes agents great. I remember, yep. yeah, I like that, Lisa. And I remember back in the day when the, the selling uh, the sellers mm-hmm. uh, would actually go ahead and put their bills out there. Yeah, more information. You know, again, that sellers' disclosures. I think an sometimes important people piece. still do that. I'm seeing a little bit again. People are asking about utilities. They have their water bill and their utility bills. So people can get an idea of what you know what the bills might be. I just actually recently had someone look at a house and it was sitting on the. They said, we went to go look at this uh, showing and we saw the bills there and we thought it was weird. And I said, no, it's their <laughs> utility bills. It's not their credit card bill, you know, but, you know, they're trying to give the people idea. Look, this is a well insulated home. These are triple pane windows. Look, we only have, you know, my heat bill is. 60 bucks or, in this big house. So or, that's, you know, they're kind of bragging and that's great. Those or, are things you want to know. Like or that. somebody who's had their basement waterproof. Yeah. That's another huge one. You have your basement waterproof. You want, you want to have the warranty, the work, the scope of work that was done. And you have it in a little binder right at the kitchen table, you know, with kind of everything right there. So mm-hmm. buyers are going through, cause they're going to see on the seller's closure, you know, basement waterproof, water leak. You're, you're going to want to show people that, Hey, that's nothing to worry about. Look at the basement. Now look at the warranty that we have. It's on yeah, a sh- shiny piece whatever, of paper. Yep. Um, it's all, you know, it was all done, permitted, and everything. 
A couple little uh, housekeeping things to get through. Uh, of course, uh, the VA, the Veterans Administration, yep. who takes care of our vets. Um, the Blue Water Navy Act of 2019, it's in effect January 1st, 2020. Yep. Uh, they've increased the funding fees a little bit, but here's the best part. VA no longer even has a maximum loan amount. Correct. So if you're a veteran, they've always had the great program. VA loans for our, our uh, serving veterans, mm-hmm. uh, zero down. There's no PMI. There's no MIP. There's an upfront funding fee that you finance into the loan. At least that's still yeah. one of the best things out My there, favorite. especially for our vets who serve the country. Yes, absolutely. Um, and it, Matt and I just had this, uh, we had a text the other day, like, what's the cap? And I said, there is none. No and he's cap like, anymore. He goes, not even for this purchase price. I said, no cap. No. It does not. They have to qualify. Obviously, you got to be able to pay it back, but there is no cap. All righty. Matt Bush, that music says uh, it's time to Man, go, but fast. a lot of fun always with you. Thanks. Yeah. And I get to trek back to on my Tauntaun East. Yeah, he's safe. Yeah, he's back safe, on the road. I, that'll be Matt Bush going 100 miles an hour at 696 headed east. So uh, look out. Be safe out there. Be yeah. careful. It's going to be crazy before it gets better. All right. All right. We got Pat Caputo coming up with sports. Tons of sports here on 97.1. Guess I'll definitely keep it here. We got Lisa Lawson yep. uh, who want to say Lisa, always a great job Thanks. on the radio. All right. For Harry Glanz, Lisa Lawson, I'm Harvey Free. We'll catch you next Saturday.